That has to be one of the most realistic conversations I've ever seen between a brother and sister in an anime. Or to be more specific, quote unquote, rom com anime. Quote ended. Just the first four to five minutes of this episode. I have never seen. I, I've seen similar scenes. To be more specific, in a slice of life rom com, I've never seen a scene handled like that. With that brother and sister moment. That. That felt like a legit conversation. It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like it came out of nowhere. It felt like an actual brother and sister talking and communicating. I don't know how to explain that. If you don't have a brother and sister, you won't know what I'm getting at. But I felt like that was a true, honest-to-God talk between a brother and sister at the beginning of this episode. And the voice acting in that... Props. Massive props to the voice actors when it came to that scene. It felt very realistic, it didn't feel out of place, and it was definitely one of the best highlight scenes of this episode. Like, that was the highlight of this episode to me because of just the conversation. That dialogue was just so real. It was so real compared to so many anime I have seen. I'm used to... Little sisters being all cute, seeing all that, you know, just showing off. And, you know, just doing the standard things we see in other anime or manga. And to see how she broke all those cliches and did realistic conversations and dialogue with Hachiman. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. The, lo the love I have for this series right now, just after seeing something like that, is incredible. This episode of Snafu Season 2. The arc that we've kind of been in, for instance, trying to figure out who's going to be the next student council president. We finally get a conclusion to this little job that's going on. The girl that asked for the job to begin with eventually became the next student council president. Thanks to the work of Hachiman in his expertise when it comes to manipulating things from the sidelines, especially what he did when it came to the online forms and stuff like that, and changing the names to Hayama and all that, and then switching it back to her name. That was some very crafty and sneaky work he did right there, and I mean, that's something that could be very abusive. Like, you can abuse something like that. I mean, if normal people got wind of something you could do when it came to that, oh yeah, definitely you can abuse the fuck out of that. But... Right now, they're in the clear, but he definitely did some very shady things to be able to get her to become the student council president. One thing, though, I want to point out when it came to this episode is, once again, the movements. The movements of the female character, I forget her exact name, please forgive me. The, the movements of the character that, you know, didn't want to become the student council president, and then she talked with, you know, Hachiman in this episode, and then she's like, he hitting on me and stuff like that. The way that was done, the movements between those characters, I know I've been bringing that up quite a bit in the past reviews, but it's something I really need to point out, because this series, I, I, I can't stop noticing it. Once I've noticed it and keyed in on that a couple episodes back, I'm, I just can't stop seeing it. I can't stop seeing the body language of the characters and the way they move. It demonstrates what they're truly thinking, especially with how Hachiman was demonstrating his body language in this episode of how uncomfortable he was or how he was just trying to do any way he could to, I guess, help out his club or, you know, help out Yui or Yukino. You get to see this body language with him. You can just understand the inner workings of his mind without him even talking. Walking, and that's a very incredible feat, but I'm not going to get back into that since I've already talked about it quite a bit, but the body language once again in this episode, just off the top, oh, like it's over the top, not off the top, it's over the top greatness when it comes to that body language, and to see how the girl that wanted to not be the student council president eventually became one, the way she was just acting, you could see that she's hiding her side. She's putting on a mask, a face. And it was kind of introduced, you know, in the last week's episode. And you could tell that she has this mask, this face she's putting on, trying to put up this cutesy act. I and mean, then she's saying things, trying to hold back her inner nature. Because she was going to say something to Hachiman in this episode that kind of broke her standard personality that we naturally see. And this, once again, goes to play in some more realistic factors when it comes to society. Because if you're into a situation in school there's a lot of different people that put on a mask or a face and to see how she did that you know goes to play back into those social norms and things that we see in natural everyday life 
and I feel like that's one of the key highlights when it comes to Snafu as a series because it plays with all these different social cues, social norms, and things you actually see in real society, and the way this series actually betrays that is so damn realistic. One of the most realistic series I've seen in recent months, definitely it is, it really is. When it comes to newer anime, it definitely is one of the most realistic. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate how I can sit down and say, like, oh my god, I cannot believe this is an anime because it's just so fucking damn realistic. I've been told this is based off of a light novel, and if that's true, I really one day need to sit down and read that light novel because this is the type of shit I like, actually. I really like, you know, reading light novels and books that are kind of about stuff like this when it comes to characters hiding, you know, their face or putting themselves behind a mask. You know, kind of how Hachiman is, and, you know, in the series in general. That's the type of stuff I do like reading on, you know, when I'm off or not doing anything at the time when I'm just, you know, lazy. That's the stuff I do like reading. And one of these days, I want to have to pick up this series. I don't know if it's in the States or not. One of these days, I want to have to pick up the series if it is in the States. If it's not, well, I'm going to have to figure out a way to read it online. But yeah, th this episode, it's the same thing I've been mentioning in the past couple episodes. The body language is impressive. The voice acting is just something else. I, I cannot believe the voice acting. Like, the voice acting is definitely one of the best when it comes to this season of anime. Like, the voice acting is the best. I, I, I don't think I've seen any anime from this season, in my opinion, that is as good as voice acting as Snafu Season 2. Like, the, the voice acting is impressive. It's better than Infotable. I, I'm sorry. I'm a fate fan. I'm a fucking fate fan, I know. But I cannot deny that the voice acting and the way it's portrayed in this series is way higher quality than things I have seen from this season. Can't deny it. I, I'm sorry. That's how I am. Music choice, the music choice, the way it fits some of these scenes, like the way it backs up some of these characters, especially with specific scenes like towards the end of the episode when you see how Hachimam was kind of getting embarrassed or, you know, he didn't like his head being patted and rubbed. The, the music, the way it backs up some of these scenes and when the music actually tones off and doesn't have anything in the background, I like those scenes. It really just gives an atmosphere to the series. The atmosphere to the series is just something else too. Like, it's hard to describe when it comes to the atmosphere of Snafu because it just gives you a realistic social like you're getting to see students deal with social problems there that's a proper description that that's what this is so yeah tell me your thoughts how do you feel about this wonderful series like this episode is such a great way to end this arc. I, I, I like getting to see the different ways they demonstrate how people put up a mask a front, getting to see how Hachiman overcomes, you know, different things, and tries to slightly change to help everybody out. And then you also still see some slight drama is still there with Yukino and Hachiman, but I mean, it's starting to slightly fix. So there's a lot of things going on here, working up and building up, but it just goes to show you how impressive this series really is. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.